finally, we are able to link a Microsoft Loop workspace with a Microsoft team. And these are seven things that you need to know about this new integration. Hi, my name's Amy. Let's nerd out. Before we jump in, let's first take a look at why this is such a huge update for both of these apps. So previously, if you have a Microsoft team and you added some members to that team, then you would also need to manually add members into the loop workspace because they were standalone from each other. But now we can add a loop workspace into a Microsoft Teams channel and that workspace will inherit the permissions of that channel. Meaning if you add members to this channel, then this loop workspace will automatically update those members. This provides for a seamless integration and collaboration. So let's now jump into those seven things that you need to know. The first thing is how we can add a loop workspace to a Teams channel. So we can navigate to the channel that we want to add the workspace to, and then we will click this little plus icon and locate loop. Now, just know that some licenses are not able to create new workspaces, such as the basic business license, but those members will still be able to access and collaborate within the loop workspace. From here, we can toggle on if we want to post to the channel about this tab, which I generally like to keep it on because it lets the team members know that you've added a loop workspace. Then we can go and save. Now from here, we can update the cover photo as we can with any of our loop workspaces. And we can even add a little icon just to distinguish that workspace. For the workspace name, it defaults to the name of the channel, but sometimes that isn't descriptive. So I like to add the team's name and then just add a little dash and then add the channel just so that if you were in Microsoft Loop, then you'll be able to easily identify this Loop workspace as being part of the Kelowna location team and then the event channel. And then down below, we'll see that the workspace members and sensitivity labels will be from this team and that channel. If you have been recently working on some content, then we can select add content and this will pull up your recent files that you could then select to automatically link and set up within this loop workspace. But you can also manually do that later. If you want to add a description, then you can add that here. And then otherwise we can just go and create. So it's a fairly easy setup process, similar to adding other applications within a team, such as Microsoft Planner or Microsoft Lists or even Microsoft Forms. So here is our workspace. And if you are new to Loop, then I have literally just published a beginner tutorial and I'll include a link to that video in the description so that you can check it out later. But now that we have our Loop workspace within this Teams channel, we can start to collaborate with our team members in real time. Now, the second thing that you need to know about Loop within Microsoft Teams is that we can only have one workspace per a Teams channel. Just going to make some more space on the left there. Now, this point is also best demonstrated using OneNote. So within OneNote in Microsoft Teams, every channel automatically gets a notes tab at the top. And we'll see that we have the 1A general channel and the event channel. And for every standard channel within a team, a section is automatically created within the notebook. So Microsoft Loop is similar in that we can only have one workspace for a Teams channel. But the thing with Loop is that we need to manually add these to the different channels. And now that Loop can be integrated within Microsoft Teams, this really begs the question if your organization should be using Loop 
or OneNote for organizing your team's notes and collaboration. And if you want me to do a video specifically comparing these two apps within the team setting, I do compare them and all of their features in another video. But if you want me to do one specifically within Microsoft Teams, then drop a comment below and let me know and we can see if we can get enough traction. So now that we know that we can only have one loop workspace per a Teams channel, this leads us to the next point of how we can manage multiple projects or topics within the Teams channel in Microsoft Loop. So ideally within every channel, we would like to have an isolated topic for that specific project or area. But if you, for example, have a channel called projects and you're going to cover a bunch of mini projects within that channel, then how can we structure our loop workspace for that? Since we can only have one loop workspace, you would either need to archive the channel, create a new channel and add a new workspace, or we can use parent pages to organize our projects. So we can create a page and we can call it projects. And then within loop, we can drag the sub pages into that area. So this is how you can organize your loop pages using parent pages for different topics or projects within your loop workspace. The fourth thing that you need to know is possibly the most important, which is how this loop workspace is now associated with the Microsoft 365 group associated with this Teams channel. To demonstrate this, I have a little chart to show you what happens in the back end when we create a Microsoft team. So when we create a team, we are actually creating a SharePoint site. And when we create a SharePoint site, we are actually creating a 365 group. When we create a 365 group, we define permissions and we would organize those groups by departments or projects or clients. And then we would add team members to that group, which are going to be the people who you want to share this content with. Then with every 365 group, we automatically get a shared document library where you can create files and all of the content created within that library inherits the permissions of the 365 group. So everybody that has access to this 365 group or access to the Microsoft team will automatically gain access to the shared documents. Additionally, we get a group email address as well as a OneNote notebook, which we have already seen. And we can also integrate with other applications, including Microsoft Loop and Planner. So the 365 group is really at the heart of a Microsoft team. And whenever we add members or remove team members from a Microsoft team, then the permissions for all of the other applications associated with that 365 group will automatically update. And in addition to that, if your organization uses governance, compliance, then that backend configuration for the 365 group will also be inherited throughout all of the other applications. And oopsie, if you accidentally remove a Microsoft Loop workspace from the Teams channel, then don't worry because we can still access it from within the Microsoft Loop homepage. And we can also easily add it back to the channel. So to do that, we just click the plus icon, go to Loop, and then here we will see that there is that Loop space, that Loop workspace that is already associated with this Teams channel. So we can go and save and it will be added back seamlessly. And for number six, if you find yourself working within a loop page and you just want to have a little bit more space, i.e. remove this Teams navigation panel on the left-hand side, then we can select the dropdown for the workspace and just go expand tab. This will open up the loop workspace and give you that nice clean page that you can collaborate on with your team without leaving the Teams dashboard. And if you want to pull that navigation menu back up, within Teams, 
and we can just select the Teams icon from the left navigation. And number seven is that we can still create a new workspace that will be standalone from a Microsoft team. But I do recommend creating loop workspaces within a Teams channel so that you can ensure that all of your team members will automatically have access. Otherwise, you're going to need to manually add and remove members to your Loop workspace as your team members change. And for that beginner guide on Microsoft Loop, then you can check out this video here, or you can select the download link to download my nine steps for using Microsoft Loop for beginners.